Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I would like to show you with you how to create uh, this game, Game of Life, with AngularJS. As you can see it randomly starts and it also has some buttons uh, like uh, start, stop and clear and the generations. This game uh, is from FreeCode.com there are several user cases or user stories and uh, you'll see how to complete each one of these. There is also a Wikipedia link that gives you all the instructions and the rules. There are several rules and actually it took me uh, one or two days to read and understand everything so then I will be able to code it. I'm not gonna get into a lot of details about the, the rules right now, but you will see me later that we will discuss some of them. Now, I'm only using uh, AngularJS and not Bootstrap as I usually do, and I will create this project in CodePen. Uh, I will leave in the description box the code for uh, the CodePen and also I will share it on GitHub too. So if you can see very clear what am I typing or, uh, you know, if you want to reread it, you can also search it in my codepen or in GitHub. I will create writing the HTML and I've already written the div ng app game of life and ng controller game of life co controller. Then I'm going to start writing a table and inside there I'm going to have an ng repeat row in rows and after that an ng click and the ng click will be activate which will be a class and it will have a parameter rows dot index of row and index continue with an ng repeat call in row.calls call is for column and last but not least include an ng class I will name uh, I will name my variable board call dot active equals one and call and old column dot active greater than one and that is my table. Uh, you won't be able to see it right now. We will first have to write some CSS code and then some JavaScript code to give it some functionality. Alright. I think now we are good with the table. Yes, so let's keep going with the buttons. First I'm going to write a class components that you will style later in the CSS and then for the three buttons I'm going to create an ng click and inside there I'm going to have a function. The first one will be stop with the name stop, another one will be start with the parameter false and the third button will be clear with the name clear. And another one thing that you are going to need is the generation. And just give it a parameter, generations. Alright, we are done with the HTML and uh, let's go to CSS. We are, go we are not going to write a lot of things, just the basics. And of course then you can style it however you like it. We're going to have the table. THTT with border one pixel solid black and border collapse uh, will be collapse. Then the table, I'm going to give it a margin auto and in this way it will be in the center of our screen. You can add a background color, in my case will be white smoke, but you can adjust it to your preferences. I'm also going to continue with the TT and I'm going to give a width and a height. 
All right. Just give uh, the class new a background color of orange and then the old the background color of orange shades. I think my last class will be components and it's about uh, the buttons and the generation. I'm just going to give the basic stylings and now you are ready to focus on the JavaScript. So the JavaScript here is going to be a little bit longer than it usually is, at least in the other free code pen, uh, sorry, free code camp challenges, because here there are many, many rules. I'm going to just read some of the tools from Wikipedia. The game of life is uh, made by the by Conway, who is a mathematician. So, let me give you a short description of what is that we are building right now. Um, so far, I created the grids with rows and columns. And uh, now I would like to mention that any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies as if it caused by underpopulation. Two, any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives in the next generation. Three, any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies as if by overpopulation. And for any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. The initial pattern constitutes the seed of the system. The first generation is created by applying the above rule simultaneously to every cell in the seed. Births and deaths occur simultaneously and the discrete moment at which this happens is sometimes called a tick. The rules continue to be applied repeatedly to create further generations. If you search over the internet, uh, you will see that there are a couple of algorithms that can um, describe what we are trying to do here in JavaScript. And it will be very helpful uh, to take a look at some of these algorithms. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, it took me a lot of hours to understand every rule and then figure out how exactly I was going to, to write them. Alright. Some basic things about um, Angular 2. The ng app that we used in the HTML is a directive that tells AngularJS that this is the root element of the application and all Angular applications must have a root element. Then the controller directive defines the controller, of course. So let's focus now clearly on the JavaScript part. We're generating the seeds, which means that, that we're going to create a function with the name random seeds. Inside there, I'm going to have a for loop. var i equals zero, i smaller than row max, call max, divided by two, and i plus plus. Inside there, I'm going to have another variable with the name row, and now I'm going to have a math.floor, math.random, and row max minus one. I'm going to do the same for columns. Okay, I started writing the function counts live, live neighbors. Once again, the name will be check neighbors. The function will have two parameters, row and call. I'm going to have a variable count equals zero, then a for loop with var 
i equals rho minus 1 and i rho plus 1, i plus plus. Another for loop with the j for columns. And inside there I'm going to have an if statement. If i is different than rho or j is different than column and and scope dot rows i plus sorry and scope dot rows i dot calls j then I'm going to need another if statement Let me write everything here correctly and I'm going to continue with the if statement. Alright, now you can see also the grid system. So if scope dot rows i dot calls j dot octave is greater or equal than 1, then count plus plus. And in the end, you wanna to return your count variable. All right, I'm just checking to make sure everything is works fine and I think that it's great. So now I'm going to continue with some other functions. Uh, all right, scope.stopGame equals function and then inside there the only thing I want is the interval dot cancel interval. All right. That looks good, I don't need anything else, and let's continue with the activate. Scope.activate equals function, and in the parentheses write row and call. Scope.rows, row.calls, call.active equals 1. And we are ready with this function also. Now, var interval scope dot start game equals function random so now we start writing a random function which is really important maybe it's the most important uh, function of this game scope dot generation equals zero if random random seeds and random seeds is another function So interval equals dollar interval function and open brackets. Inside these brackets we're going to have scope dot generation plus plus and then we need two four loops. The first one will be for the rows and the next one of course for columns. Adjust your parameters. All right, and inside there, we're going to have a variable, another variable. <coughs> I'm sorry for this. V so var no of neighbors equals check neighbors i j and then scope dot rows i dot calls j dot neighbors equals no of neighbors. All right, we will continue one more time with two more for loops. The parameters here are the same as above, so you can just copy and paste them. And of course, we'll have some if statements. In the first if statement, you will need a dollar scope dot rows i dot calls j dot active greater of one. And inside there, open your brackets again and write if scope dot rows i 
dot cos j dot neighbors is greater or equal to 4 or scope dot rows i dot cos j dot neighbors is smaller than 1 then open brackets and write once again scope dot rows i dot cos j dot active equals 0 now you need an else statement scope dot rows i dot cos j dot active plus plus and another else statement which will include an if statement and will and it will be scope dot rows i cos j neighbors equals equals three and scope dot rows i dot cos j dot active equals one all right now i'm going to to finish this function and then we'll find uh, the mistake that, that I think I know where it is but let's just be sure uh, it must be a bracket that I forgot to close let me check it mm -hmm, yes here it is uh, the else statement should have uh, also brackets that I, that I forgot to read. Great, now let's continue with the start game. In the HTML code we write the start with the parameter false, but now I'm going to do it scope.start equals true, and then I'm going to have the clear function, so we will need once again two for loops, with our usual parameters of columns and of rows and columns and inside there just write scope dot rows i dot calls j dot active equals zero alright and that's it guys I hope that you like this game and I know that the rules are quite complicated. That's why um, I mentioned that you should go to Wikipedia or to any other website and search for the algorithm, uh, some code or some examples. Try to play this game and this will help you to better understand it. So now we can see the generation. We can use uh, the board, we can click on it. Then we have uh, the three buttons, the clear one that it clears everything. And of course you can uh, refresh the website and see one more time how this game is. Thank you very much for watching, have a great day and if you like this video please share and subscribe. Thank you very much.